in the 1976 Montreal Olympics, East Germany surpassed all expectations, clinching the third spot overall in the medal tally despite being a nation of only 17 million people. The prowess of the East German women's swimming team was particularly noteworthy, securing an impressive 11 out of the 13 gold medals up for grabs. However, suspicions began to arise. It wasn't just the sudden surge in victories that raised eyebrows. Journalists started questioning the unusually deep voices and broad shoulders of the female athlete. While doping had been a concern in the Olympics throughout the 20th century, cases were rare. Instances of athletes caught using drugs like amphetamines or alcohol were few and far between. However, the landscape shifted in 1968 when suspicions arose regarding the use of male hormones, particularly among female shot putters who displayed a noticeably androgenic phenotype. These concerns prompted action from the International Olympic Committee, IOC, fearing that allegations of drug use would tarnish the integrity of the Games. Consequently, the 1976 Olympics became the first to test for anabolic steroids. Surprisingly, all tests on the East German women came back negative, leaving no concrete evidence to substantiate the doping claims. With these allegations dismissed, the East Germans continued to dominate women's swimming for over a decade, bolstering East Germany's reputation as a sporting powerhouse and showcasing the supposed superiority of the socialist system. However, the facade began to crumble on November 9, 1989 with the fall of the Berlin Wall and the subsequent reunification of East and West Germany. Information regarding state-sponsored doping started to leak to the Western press despite efforts by the East German government to destroy all evidence of their illicit activities. It was revealed that for nearly 25 years, the East German government had been administering anabolic steroids to its athletes under the guise of vitamins and supplements. Shockingly, this included girls as young as 14, highlighting the abhorrent and immoral practices that had been carried out. While deeply troubling, this revelation laid the groundwork for our understanding of performance-enhancing drugs and their impact on athletes. The formulations, doses, timings, evading drug tests, and side effects are all critical aspects to consider when discussing the use of anabolic steroids. In this video, we'll delve into the side effects, some of which are readily visible while others remain hidden. We'll also explore potential treatments for these side effects. Let's begin by examining the masculinizing side effects of anabolic steroids, including those that uniquely affect women. We'll start with the most overt and observable effects, progressing to those that may not be immediately apparent to an outsider. Anabolic steroids, formerly known as anabolic androgenic steroids, exert two main effects. They're anabolic, meaning they stimulate the conversion of smaller molecules into larger ones, and they're androgenic, meaning they induce and maintain masculine characteristics. For female athletes, it's the androgenic effects of steroids that pose the greatest concern. When a female athlete begins to develop male characteristics due to steroid use, it's termed virilization. The term virilization originates from the Latin word viluris, meaning masculine. One of the most conspicuous signs of virilization in women who use anabolic steroids is facial changes. While these effects may be subtly seen in athletes from the past, such as East German swimmer Andreas Kreger, they're more pronounced in contemporary female bodybuilders. These individuals often exhibit a greater facial width to height ratio, a stronger jawline, and more defined cheekbones, reflecting a shift towards more masculine facial features. Interestingly, this phenomenon has been corroborated by studies including one involving female to male transsexuals who underwent testosterone therapy for a minimum of three years after the age of 18. The study revealed that following testosterone treatment, the percentage of participants perceived as male by most observers surged from 32% to a staggering 95.5%. Remarkable structural changes were observed, including a broadened upper jaw and mint face, narrowed nasal width, and coarser skin texture. These alterations were attributed to hypertrophy of facial muscles and redistribution of facial fats, resulting in more angular facial features and hollower cheeks. Another unmistakable indication of anabolic steroid use in women is the deepening of their voices. Testosterone prompts thickening of the vocal cords, leading to a lower frequency of vibration and subsequently a deeper pitch. 
This transformation can occur rapidly as evidenced by a case study where a woman experienced voice changes within just eight weeks after consuming 50 mg of nandrolone for a mere six weeks. Furthermore, anabolic steroids also impact the density and distribution of women's hair. Testosterone is converted into dehydrotestosterone or DHT by the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. DHT in turn triggers hair follicle miniaturization on the scalp, resulting in hair loss commonly known as male pattern baldness. Conversely, on the body, DHT stimulates vellus hair follicles to transform into terminal hair follicles, leading to increased body hair growth, medically termed hirsutism. Female bodybuilders often conceal these effects by wearing wigs and resorting to shaving. An often overlooked side effect of anabolic steroid is breast atrophy. When women take these steroids, their estrogen to androgen ratio decreases, causing breast lubules to atrophy. This dual effect not only diminishes breast size, but also alters breast tissue composition. An additional effect of anabolic steroids in women is the alteration of fat distribution, leading to android fat deposition around the abdomen instead of the typical gynoid distribution around the breast, buttocks, and thighs. To mitigate this change, many female bodybuilders opt for breast implants to maintain their desired physique. Another less discussed side effect is clitoromegaly, where the clitoris enlarges due to steroid use. This phenomenon can be understood through embryology as both male and female genitalia originate from the same structure, the primordial phallus. Testosterone prompts the primordial phallus to differentiate into a penis in males, while in females with lower testosterone levels, it continues to develop into a clitoris. When women take anabolic steroids, the clitoris may grow due to increased testosterone levels. One particularly hidden side effect is anovulation, where women's menstrual periods become irregular or cease altogether. This renders women essentially infertile while on steroids. This occurs due to the suppression of the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal or HPG axis, where anabolic steroids signal to the brain that there are sufficient sex hormones in the bloodstream, leading to the cessation of stimulating hormone release. As a result, ovulation ceases and fertility is compromised. Upon cessation of steroid use, menstrual cycles may return to normal, but most other side effects are irreversible. This is exemplified by former GDR athletes like Andreas Kreger, who, unable to reconcile their altered physical appearance with their gender identity, underwent sex reassignment surgery. While cosmetic treatments like waxing and surgical augmentation may alleviate some concerns, the majority of side effects persist. For any woman considering the use of anabolic steroids, it's crucial to thoroughly evaluate the potential risks and consequences before making a decision. As we conclude this discussion on the side effects of anabolic steroids in women, I hope you found the information insightful and informative. If you did, don't forget to show your support by giving this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more content like this, and hitting that notification bell so you never miss an update. Your engagement helps us continue to create valuable content and reach a wider audience, so we truly appreciate your support. If you'd like to go the extra mile in supporting our channel, consider giving us super thanks, which helps us invest in better equipment and resources to improve the quality of our videos. Thanks again for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.